Hey Sugar Geeks, Liz here. Today I'm going to show you how to make a super fun red, white, and blue ice cream cake. It's so patriotic. It's coming up next on the Sugar Geek Show. I don't know about you guys, but nothing says it's summertime like 4th of July and ice cream. <laughs> so we're gonna make another ice cream cake and this time we're gonna be using my white velvet cake recipe because it's so easy to color. It's super simple and it doesn't get overmixed and it tastes delicious. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is defrost your ice cream so that we can freeze the ice cream. Does that make sense? <laughs> we need to take it out of the freezer for like an hour or so just so it starts to get softened and then we're going to line an eight inch cake pan with some aluminum foil and then smear all of our softened ice cream in there until it's nice and flat and level. And then we're gonna put that back into the freezer to freeze overnight. Technically you could like only let it freeze for six hours, but I have had a few of my like, you know, sugar geeks tell me that they tried to rush it and bad things happened. And if you're really getting technical, you'd probably wanna make this cake two days before because you wanna freeze the ice cream and then make your whole cake and then freeze the whole cake. You could make this like weeks in advance if you wanted to, which is actually a plus. So now that our ice cream is frozen and it's in the freezer and it's doing its thing, now we can make our cake layers. Starting off with our white velvet cake recipe, you're gonna take your milk, divide it in half, and into the first portion of the milk, you're going to add your uh, oil and then set that aside. And then for the rest of the milk, you're gonna add the eggs and the vanilla. Whisk that up to break up the eggs and then set that aside. We're gonna take our flour and our sugar, our baking powder, baking soda, and salt and put that into the bowl of our stand mixer with the paddle attachment attached. And then you're going to add your softened butter into that flour mixture and we're gonna mix that until it looks like a coarse sand. And what this is doing is we're coating the flour in butter so that we have less gluten development when we actually mix. And this results in that velvet texture. Yes, it's actually a thing. It's not just like a fancy name for the cake. It's a velvety texture. The reason why we can't use all purpose flour for this, we have to use cake flour, is because all purpose flour has a higher level of protein, which means more gluten development, which means we have like a tougher texture. So for this, we have to use cake flour. You can maybe get away with pastry flour, but to that AP flour with the cornstarch replacement thing is not gonna work for this. Make sure your eggs and your milk and your butter are all room temperature. I actually warm my milk up in the microwave for a little bit till it feels a little bit warm. Butter should be softened to the point where you could press your finger in it and it leaves an indent. Eggs, I like to take those and put them into a bowl of hot water for five minutes and that brings them up to room temperature. Okay, so now that we have this beautiful coarse sandy texture, we're gonna take the milk and oil mixture, add that in there, and we're gonna mix on medium speed for two full minutes. You're not gonna overmix it, you're not gonna get tunneling. This is developing air and texture and fluffiness, so don't be afraid to do the two full minutes. Now it looks white and fluffy and beautiful and gorgeous, so we're going to take that warm milk egg mixture and start drizzling it in there while mixing on low until it's fully mixed in. Again, don't worry about over mixing it. it in fact, if you under mix this batter, it'll kind of turn brown and it won't rise very much, which is much more common than over mixing. Now that your batter is mixed, we're gonna divide it in half. I actually use a scale to make sure that it's perfectly divided in half. Go ahead and add in a tablespoon of electric blue food coloring. If you have royal blue or any other kind of blue, you can use that. Keep in mind, it might not turn out a true blue. It might be more on the purple side or the green side, depending on what you use. I like electric blue because it was like this really true bright blue. And then to the other side, we're gonna add a tablespoon of super red food coloring. I'm using AmeriColor for both of these, but you can use whatever brand you want, like Wilton. Just make sure it's like the gel and not the watery liquid stuff. Now that those are all mixed and blended and our batter is beautiful and colorful, we're going to pour these into two eight inch by two inch cake pans uh, with cake goop. That's my homemade pan release. It works so good. Check it out, please, if you like saving money and not using parchment circles anymore. <laughs> uh, or you can use whatever cake release you like. And then we're gonna bake that at 335 degrees for about 35 to 40 minutes, depending on your oven. You just wanna kinda give it a tap on top and make sure that it bounces back and it's set before you pull it out of the oven. 
You can use other size cake pans if you want. I wouldn't recommend doing this with a six inch cake pan though, because then your cake starts to get really tall and skinny and it's a little bit hard to cut an eight inch ice cream cake, let alone a six inch ice cream cake. So I would go eight inches or bigger. Go big or go home. Once your cakes are done baking, you're gonna let them rest in the pan for 10 to 15 minutes or until the pan feels cool enough to handle it. Flip it out onto a cooling rack, let them cool down a little bit more so that they're safe to handle. Wrap them in plastic wrap and then pop them in the freezer. So our cake layers will be frozen and our ice cream will be frozen. So that's day one. <laughs> What's the sun, did you get that? <laughs> now it is time to put our cake together. So what we're gonna do is make our stabilized whipped cream. I am using gelatin to stabilize my whipped cream because I think it has the least effect on the taste and texture of the final product. But if you go to my website under stabilized whipped cream, I have like a blog post with all kinds of other ways to stabilize it, like cornstarch or um, like pre-made packages. All you have to do is put the gelatin into the cold water and let it bloom for about five minutes. Then we're gonna microwave that for 10, 15 seconds, just until the granules of gelatin dissolve and everything looks clear. Then I'm going to add a little bit of my heavy whipping cream to that gelatin so that it emulsifies with the larger batch of gelatin without getting any like strings in there or anything like that. Start whipping your uh, heavy cream and about at the point it starts getting kind of thick, you can add in your vanilla and your powdered sugar. Then we're gonna continue mixing with the whisk attachment until you start seeing lines develop in the surface. And that's when I add in the gelatin because we're like almost to the point where we're like finished, but we don't wanna over mix, right? The gelatin will immediately start to set the whipped cream. So you don't wanna add it in like really far in the beginning. And you don't wanna add it too far at the end because then you'll over mix your whipped cream and it won't be smooth. So just continue mixing until you have nice firm peaks and then we gotta work fast. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and trim off the tops, the bottoms and the sides of my cakes because they are a little bit browned and discolored. And since we're focusing very much on how beautiful and brightly colored this cake is, we don't necessarily want that. It's not 100% necessary, but it kind of is. <laughs> so I just use my serrated bread knife to just trim that top edge, the side and the bottom all off and just discard that. Put your first layer of cake, I thought blue because darkest to lightest is red lighter than blue. I don't know, in my mind it is. Coldest to hottest, temperature wise. So blue down first, then you put your ice cream layer, then you put your red layer. You might notice that the ice cream layer is a little bit wider than the actual cakes because we trimmed off the sides. So just bulk it up a little bit, or you can kind of like smooth down the outer layer of ice cream if it starts to kind of melt down a little bit, just, you know, smooth it, make it all flat. And then we're gonna cover the whole thing in a layer of uh, the stabilized whipped cream. Then you can put that into the freezer for about 30 minutes and then you can put your final layer of uh, stabilized whipped cream on there. And stabilized whipped cream smooths out so easily. I honestly am addicted to frosting cakes and stabilized whipped cream because it actually is easier to smooth and get bubble free than actual buttercream. So it's, if you haven't tried it, you definitely should. So now you can put that into the freezer to freeze overnight basically, uh, or to whenever you need to serve your cake. I waited to decorate mine because I didn't want like my fruit to freeze or my sprinkles to run. So right before the party, I took my cake out and I piped a little shell border up on top. You could pipe the shell border and like just freeze that all and add the fruit later, but you know, it's up to you. Put some sprinkles around the outside edge, around the bottom, some really cute like patriotic sprinkles up on top, added some extra like heavy whipping cream. Um, I had to make another batch. So just so you know, like you might have to make more whipped cream for the top. You don't wanna freeze fresh fruit though because when it defrosts, it looks lit. So add your fresh fruit right before you serve it. And that's it. It is ice cream. So just keep in mind, it has to stay in the freezer not the fridge. So you gotta keep it there until you're ready to eat it. Some people take it out ahead of time, but honestly, by the time you take it out and you get to actually cutting it, it's probably good to go. So you don't really have to like take it out ahead of time. If for some reason you don't eat all of your ice cream cake, you can cover the cut surface with a layer of plastic wrap to kind of seal it back in and then put it back in the freezer so it doesn't dry out. Okay, it's time to taste our ice cream cake. Look how cute she is. Mmm. 
Oh my gosh, it's so refreshing. It'd be perfect for a barbecue. Okay, I'm putting it down. <laughs> so that's it guys, that's how you make a red, white, and blue 4th of July ice cream cake. If you wanna see more ice cream cakes, don't forget to check out the Oreo cookies and cream cake. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell if you wanna see more videos like this one. I'm Liz Merrick and I will see you guys next week. Bye.